Hello there, I will show you how to add another lesson, like those we have here. So the simplest thing is to start, is to go to our data order, then plant models. And here we already have some lessons that are around and the simplest thing is to pick one that is um, already close enough. For example, we could take the minimum example and copy this and say, for example, tutorial. It's also possible to make a complete new folder, but this is the simplest one. So you have already some scripts in here. What we will do is we get the folder here, tutorial. We can, for example, rename this one then to tutorial. There's always a test file like this. So tutorial test. We also want to do that with those. And here we have this one. So let's see. We quickly want to assign them. So we have those. So tests. I want, I duplicated that one, so I want to delete that. So. So here, in the tutorial, we have the scene where the simulation is running. So, whatever we want to have here, if this is a reactor, like or a web service, or a, a real, um, real hardware, here is the thing that we can connect it to. For example, this could be like, um, the, sim the simulation. And here, whatever we want to do, make the phone white, we can add buttons, whatever. Like here, we have like, <laughs> we can do everything we want to have. We have the full control about it. The only thing, uh, or the boundary that we need to take care of is this. We will go for the simulation page and derive from that one. And here we need to change the name. And so the first thing would be like the namespace. We have minimum example. This will be the namespace of our old folder, which is tutorial. We also named the class tutorial. Um, I think there's no constructor. As you see, this is a boundary description. So we get like a call from setup UI. There we just get the notification that we are in the simulation part and not in a test part. Here we can say, for example, add buttons or add whatever we need. Then we have um, a quite low level straightforward inputs and outputs uh, description. So for example, here we can say which inputs we have, which outputs we have. For example, this could be, um, and the important thing is like, this is the input of your simulation and the input of your simulation are the outputs of the controller and your outputs of your simulation, obviously those are the inputs to your controller. So, for example, if the inputs could be that there is a digital output or something, so digital output one, maybe we have an uh, integer output one, it is normally a true, we can add a description, whatever, and then hint. The digital output, whatever. And also the plant can has uh, it can have some outputs, we can say whatever we need, or we can just leave it as that. 
Then here we calculate the next step. So this is called for every calculation step. And here we can define what will happen. We can say we have, as we, if we navigate here to simulation page, we have the simulation input, simulation outputs, and we can access them through here. So we can say, for example, if or simulation input, we can have we get the boolean state of the d1. It is also often helpful to define those as current constants. They're just a key to look up. But if you have a constant, then you can just make a, a, a constant string. So we can assign this one to output. Here we can push we want to set sumsul to this one. So what we are doing here is to get the stage of digital output one and assign it to Zumsl. All right. So as you can see here, we can do whatever we want. This can be a simple simulation, just an assignment as we have it here. But this could also be like a chemical plant or other thing. So this is already right. We can go to the tutorial test. Here we want to define the test behavior and when do we set how many stars. So we change the namespace. We want to have a tutorial example that it matches the name here. Um, normally we want to have an, uh, a reference to a tutorial. So this one, which is a simulation. We get the main node and the open lesson. The open lesson gives us um, all the data we need. This is an interface, so at the moment where we have SFC, we get the SFC data. So here we have title, description, goal, uh, where the files are located, um, how many stars at the moment are, so we have different possibilities. Here we first get the node, so to get an access, so we get back to here. I will see this is the wrong one, so we can delete this. So here this would be the tutorial. So if this one tutorial test, here we add this file. So as you can see, our test setup is really we have our node or our test scene, and this contains the tutorial itself. And here we can define what should happen here. So we get the node tutorial. Let's check if this is correct. Yes, we have it here. So we get this node. And with that one, we already have access to this data here. We want to check. Here we get the file path. Um, we load here the SFC entity. This entity we can check if it's valid. We see um, for the simulation we want to initialize it. We create a simulation master. There in within that one there's a PLC, a PLC simulation, and here we check if it can actually run. If, if not, we have here a help variable that will say okay, it cannot run. The process is called for every frame. So here we can say what we actually want to do. Normally, if it, is, if it is executable, we want to run a simulation. We could actually take this one out. Do nothing. So. So for example, we just want to update uh, the simulation. Here we can uh, can placing, for example, the data time, but we can also just um, add a constant milliseconds. For example, we can make it to 30 milliseconds per cycle. All right, so this is the setup for the scripts. Also here, this can be an easy test. If it should, 
<laughs> depends on the plant and this can be as big as you want you can always see in other places how they did it there and how different test strategies work so at the moment we have our data but it's not running at the moment so what we want to do is to go to the lessons and here we see if there are already those eight lessons and the same here the thing is here we want to add another lesson which can just copy a folder and for example make this to zero whatever the only thing that matters here is that it is a uh, it is sorted alphabetically so it's so it starts with zero and stops with eight so this will be the first lesson if this would be like an A, this will be the last lesson. We do it for zero, so it's the first lesson. Here we'll find some small scripts. We have it here. The thing we need to fill out is the description here. So here we can say, hello world. This, is, this will be the title. There's a goal. my goal and here is the important part we want to have the simulation and test paths so the best thing to do normally is to right click and copy path the same for our one we have the tutorial test copy path There we go, we saved that. Let's check if this works. So here we are, there's the hello world. So we see there's my description, my goal. We'll see our inputs, our outputs that we have here. And here you see those um, the inputs and outputs from this view are switched and from the scripts because here we are looking from the controller and not from the plant. We see we all have the simulation. So if you click on it, we have the simulation here. If I remember correctly, we said that if I put if I put digital output one to true, then it zooms a little bit true as well. So here we can say um, in it it's bigger than whatever. So if I found it, we go back to init, be stayed, and the time is bigger than 400 milliseconds, we go there. So I check if that's true. So what we see here that is that the digital output one is not reset, but we'll see why in a second. If you set this to false, We'll see that now it alternates from true to false. There's a small point to look at. We have in the script the default value. And the booleans normally they are reset to the default value, while integers remain their number. So we set this to false, which is like the often the normal case. Go back, we run it. Now it stays to false. And like this now it alternates so this already works we here have the test page we see nothing here so we check what happened we see there's an error the class of total test couldn't be found all right so we have a problem there we get tutorial the note ah tutorial test Let's see if this works now. That's a lot better. So here we have a view to the simulation and we can add overlays. All right, so this is the first part. The next part is we always want to have test cases to check every time if it works. So for this, we have the what tests. 
We have the plant models and here we can add another folder. So here the same. Plant models. We take just one. So we say here tutorial. Here we need the paths, as we saw before, we can copy those from lessons. So actually we want to have the test file. We don't need the scene itself, just a test. And here we want to say, okay, what will happen? At the moment we don't set any stars. So let's fake one. Here in the lesson entity we have set and save stars. This is the one we want to call. So we want to, we can actually set it already here, but we also kind of save this as a variable and then set it. So we always set it to one. Save stars, one. So with this, we set how many stars we get. So we now always will have one star. So we can take this empty, SFC. This normally should result to zero, but here we can add it to one. We don't need those anymore. So we can close this. We can save everything as well. Close it. Reopen. We'll run the tests. I will see here the tutorial. Perfect, so that's it. We can commit it and it will be in there. Perfect. As an example, we can also look at other models. For example, here at the circular saw model. We see there is a 2D and 3D scene. We have all the possibilities from Godot, so we actually have the view from here. And we have the UI control. We can turn it on and off. You see it here. We start with off and this is turned on here by the model. So here where we say setup UI, we open the UI control and here we've set up UI, we say okay it's visible, we can look the uh, reconnect the events and um, push down the states here. So here is we we control all those. This will then go up again here to circle model. We will set the simulation outputs to the values. As I, saw before, as, as I said before, we have here uh, the constant strings, which are, which are the keys. I really like it like that because then I just can use it uh, everywhere like that. And if I want to change that from S1 to S100 or whatever, then it's in immediately. Here the same. We initialize it, we have the input and outputs, and we calculate here the next steps. I calculate the simulation here in the node itself, so we have it here. And here we'll say, okay, what will happen? So we can break, uh, it checks if the switch is on. Here I have the motor keys. I also have a signal history uh, with a flicker count. If I say, okay, if it flickers too much in a few, in a few steps, um, then it breaks down. If it breaks down, I say, okay, well, it's broken. I make the smoke visible and I flash the next few frames. Here we have it in here. I made a scene here, so it's easy to say, okay, we have a camera, we have a light, we have UI, 
and here we have the 3D model. Here we have a plate, we have the breakdown smoke, so if I enable this, we see it begins to smoke, and I have here the flash, that is just visible for a few frames. So in the end, it can be as easy or complex as you want. Here we have um, the mass test chamber, which is at the moment the most complex model, um, which is then a little bit more complicated. We have a lot of uh, particle system, we have lasers, we have discharging, uh, we have uh, actors, several actors that form. And uh, depending on what you do, then this reaction here in the center changes. So we are very free to do whatever we want. Right, that's it. If you have any questions, you can visit GitHub pages and ask questions there.